A very exciting 24 hours with the government finally launching their climate action plan yesterday. So here's just a quick run through some of the key things that are in it for the wind sector and electricity as a whole. First of all, 70% renewable electricity by 2030 is now officially part of the plan. We had expected this, it's now locked in, and this is a key driver of increasing wind energy over the next decade. Even better though, there's a clear recognition in the plan for the huge role that on and offshore wind will play over the next decade. A massive push for offshore wind energy in the action plan, clearly showing that the government recognises the huge potential, finally, for offshore wind in Ireland. Three and a half gigawatts to be developed over the next 10 years. Complementing that, a doubling of our onshore wind capacity, going from the expected 4.2 gigawatts in 2020 up to 8.2 gigawatts by 2030. This is fantastic news for the wind energy sector, showing how we'll be a key part of decarbonising the Irish energy system over the next decade. As well as electricity directly, the government also recognises the contribution we can make to heat and transport. A hugely optimistic target of 1 million electric vehicles in Ireland by 2030 to be powered by this clean 70% renewable electricity in combination with 600,000 heat pumps. So clean heating and clean transport powered by the offshore and onshore renewable electricity that we provide. And also recognition that more interconnection is required and more DS3 programs to integrate wind energy, which is also great news. The key to success, governance. The fantastic piece about this document is it recognises that we need governance and accountability to drive this ambition. That is a wonderful uh, addition to this plan, as well as setting ambitious targets, we need this governance and accountability to make sure it's actually implemented. A number of new structures put in place, a climate action delivery board led by the Department of Antishuk to hold departments accountable. The Climate Change Advisory Council is now changed to the Climate Action Council with more powers to hold, to give advice and, and, and give, give recommendations. We're going to have the standing committee in the Oireachtas. The Climate Action Oireachtas Committee will remain a standing committee within the Oireachtas. We've seen what they've published in the Joint Oireachtas Report earlier this, way, this year. They'll now continue to hold the government officials and departments to account. And finally, the Climate Action Amendment Bill that's due to be published in 2019 will set some of these frameworks in place, as well as an ambition to put in place a long-term 2050 target for Ireland's carbon emissions. This will be central to success. Having high level targets, ambitious targets, is a great start, but actually implementing it will require these oversights and governance and accountability structures. So we're delighted with that. Finally, just a few quick words on the broader plan. It covers all sectors. It's very much CO2 based. You'll see in chapter four where they did the analysis, they looked at carbon emissions across all sectors which of those would be the most cost effective? Renewable electricity, primarily on and offshore wind, coming in below cost, saving consumers money in the long term with negative carbon emission abatement costs. In total, there's 183 actions across numerous different sectors, but out of those 183 actions, there's 18 specifically on, on electricity. But more importantly, the 18 actions are backed up by about 120 steps more micro detailed actions that need to be carried out within each of the overall actions. Those different actions, those 18 actions are spread across five different sectors, renewable energy and grid stream aligning, offshore renewable energy, which offshore wind plays a huge role, route to market, microgen and CCS. And importantly, you'll see when it comes to offshore renewable energy, there's three actions, but 54 detailed steps about how this has to become a reality. For renewable energy and grid, there's nine steps and 38, nine actions and 38 individual steps. So lots to get your teeth into, overall really positive and a clear signal that on and offshore wind have a central role to play in decarbonising Ireland's electricity and energy system over the next decade. Thanks for listening.